Okay, in 5-4, we have a coin rotate on a rotating disc. A coin of mass 0 0.005 kilograms is placed on a horizontal disc, a distance 14 centimeters from the center. The disc rotates at a constant rate, counterclockwise direction is seen from above. The coin doesn't slip, and the time it takes the coin to make a complete revolution is one and a half seconds. Part A says the figure below shows the disc and coin as viewed from above. Draw and label the vectors on the figure below to show the instantaneous acceleration and linear velocity for the coin when it's at the position shown. Okay, so the instantaneous linear velocity, here's the center of the disc, here's the circle, sorry, that's terrible. Okay, here's my coin, okay. The velocity is going in this direction. It's tangent to the circle, so it should look like that. The acceleration is centripetal, so your acceleration vector should be towards the center. So you get one point for any properly labeled vertical vector pointing up, that should be V. And you get one point for a properly labeled horizontal vector to the left. That should be labeled acceleration. So two points for part A. Part B asks us to determine the speed of the coin. So, uh, sorry, the linear speed of the coin. So we know that's a displacement over time. It's really more of a distance over time, but that's okay. So let's use one time around because that's the easiest thing to do. So we have 2 pi r over the period. Okay, now we don't want the radius of the whole disk, we just want how far it is from the center. So that lands us at 2 pi times 14 centimeters over 1.5 seconds, because they told us earlier, time it takes to go one complete revolution is 1.5 seconds. So that lands us at 0 0.59 meters per second. One point for indicating that you gotta use the circumference for the distance, and then one point for the correct answer. Two points there. So what we haven't said yet is that what's keeping the coin attached to the disc is friction. So part C says the rate of rotation is gradually increased. The coefficient of static friction between the coin and the disc is given. Determine the linear speed of the coin when it just begins to slip. So how much friction can this provide, right? So we remember that, sorry, remember that Fs max is mu s times the normal force. And I may have said kinetic friction earlier. I'm sorry. The coefficient of static friction is given. So the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.50. Since we are all horizontal here, the normal force is just equal to mg. And we're given the mass of the coin. It's very small. But we get the most friction that this situation can provide is this point. O2 four, five newtons. That's the maximum friction that this situation can provide. Now remember, friction is also, friction is acting as a centripetal force. So that's equal to mv squared over r. So all I have to do is substitute this fs max for mv squared over r. We're given m, we're given r. So we get a velocity of 0 0.83 meters per second. That's the maximum speed that this can spin and still provide enough friction. So one point for realizing that the net force was centripetal, one point for realizing that static friction provides the centripetal force, um, I guess one point for equating the friction to the centripetal force. That was kind of weird. Oh, I guess the, the expression for centripetal force was realizing that it's mv squared over r and then a point for the answer. So one point for realizing that static friction was providing the centripetal force. One force, sorry, one point for the correct uh, calculating of static friction, sorry. Um, and then what, one point for the correct answer. So a total of four points here. I'm sorry, I talked over myself. One point for getting FS, one point for realizing that FS was a centripetal force, one point for getting the mv squared over r, and then one point for the correct answer. Sorry about that. So that is part C. And part D says, how would our answer change if we put a second identical coin glued to the top of the first coin and let it rip? Okay, how would our velocity change? So what we know then is that fs max is equal to mu s times mg. So we know that our new force is going to equal, the coefficient stays the same, the mass doubles, 
gravity stays the same, our new force is equal to two times our old force. Okay. Our velocity was F times R over M. We'll come back here. Our velocity was, sorry, I, I didn't actually solve it that way, but what we have here is F equals MV squared over R. So V squared equals F R over M. And so V equals rad F R over M. So I didn't explicitly say that, but we got to say it here. All right. So factor of change method here, our new V, yeah, put our rad up. Our new force is twice the old one, our same radius here, but our mass doubled also, didn't it? So I got to put a two here. So our new velocity is equal to the old velocity. Okay, so uh, two points for that. One point for indicating that there's no change and then one point for a reasonable explanation. Okay, you could have said, well, the new frictional force is double, but the mass is also double. Um, couple of ways. I think factor of change is the best way to indicate that. So that is number four.